Hello again traders and welcome out. This is Sonkis from Maverick Currencies and this is another market recap for Tuesday, March the 14th. Let's take a look at markets and the aftermath of the US CPI report. So looking at the markets today, we did see a bit of a snapback. So we have seen markets being under pressure for the last four to five trading days. And what we're seeing today is a bit of a reversal. So if you pay attention to the S&P today, I mean, we did have nice gains S&P up 1.68%, and we have the World Stock Index up 1.33%. Uh, cryptos continues to push higher, but to make a note that it did um, sort of uh, pair gains from earlier today. So very, very strong move in the in the past few days. And what we are noticing is a sort of a change where, you know, gold had a pretty aggressive move to the upside. Guess what? The world's pulling back. Oil is trying to break lower and the U.S. bond yields, they are bouncing. Again, we are we have seen very aggressive move in some areas. And that's why we have seen such a dramatic move. For example, what we've seen in the gold market, what we've seen in the um, just because the yields have been kind of dropping very aggressively. And in between the U.S. dollar today was unchanged. And that's because there was no surprise from the U.S. CPI report. That's why there was no fireworks. So let's take a look at the price action today and how the candlestick looks. And you can see that we are in this wide trading range. And we got back to the uh, support area. And as I've said before, until we break this lower, we can get a little bit more directional. But this is still a sideways range. But at the same time, we are still below the 2050 and the 200 moving average. So is this a bear rally? It looks like a bear rally to me. And but this bear rally can continue going higher before it fails. And if you want to take a look at what that price action looks like, take a look at the crypto markets. I mean, look at that move here in in a in a standard textbook uh, movement here. Uh, we can see that it made a lower low and it had a very strong bounce. So this is making a lower high. So this is still considered a bear rally. But you can see that the last uh, three trading days, four trading days have been very aggressive. But look at the exhaustion that we are getting here. We did rally up and then we paired some of those gains, so which means that it seems like it's running out of gas. So I no longer want to be looking at a breakout on the on this uh, crypto world. I think I'll be looking for shorting off this rally here. Now, looking at the world stock index, we're seeing a very similar scenario. Uh, not aggressively bullish. This is just a bear rally. So if you are liking the markets on a short side and you're seeing a bear, this sort of bear rally, this is time to stay out. And some traders want to play this move on an intraday basis. But that's again, uh, basically, you know, that, that's a great strategy for the short term traders. Now, looking at the uh, daily performance today, as you can see, still a pretty decent number in the crypto markets, up 2.14% in Bitcoin. Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin Cash was up slightly more. Ethereum at 1.5, and we have the Litecoin at 2.3. So overall, in a, in a in a nice little range across the board. But we need to make a note that these numbers were a lot bigger earlier today. So I personally do not like uh, buying the crypto here, but I do like the exhaustion that we've seen today, and see we get a continued pullback in the markets now. Looking at the uh, currency world, you can see that the dollar was really absent today. So dollar had a, a back and forth, but it just didn't go anywhere. And why is that? Well, the numbers came out and they were in line with expectation. Um, but the dollar had already dropped before going into this report. So there was just no surprise, but nothing new to really push it lower. Remember, we talked about yesterday that the dollar could have had a big move if the inflation number ticked higher, but that was not the case. So dollar is on the on the sideways trend, but then look at that. Yen pulls back. Again, yen continues to be a nice little uh, strategy here that every time you see a rally in the yen, you know, it's a good strategy to kind of short here because again, Bank of Japan has not made any change with their uh, policy. So overall, if the dollar stays weak, then the yen really uh, is where uh, we see some strength. And then if the dollar really stabilized here, then the weakness goes into the yen. So that's the kind of uh, uh, the play that's kind of playing out. So as Frank, I noted that um, just early this week that we had a similar move in the Swiss franc as we're seeing in the Bitcoin or in the crypto world here. We got a nice move up 
and we've, we've seen a bit of a doji or indecision and then just pulling back. So I do like uh, Swiss Frank more further to the downside, especially testing other support. I think it's really extended a little bit at this point. On the other hand, Euro is just staying steady. Remember, on Thursday, we have the ECB rate statement, but so far, Euro really hasn't performed as much. So maybe we're just looking for a big catalyst off of that ECB press conference. And a lot of focus will be on the statement and if they will be dovish or bullish. I see a big opportunity coming in the Euro. Uh, which way? I mean, we'll find out. Uh, we'll, we'll set up a strategy on, uh, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday and we'll trade the news event and, and then see which way the big moves get. We might get an initial rally and then sell the rally. That's, uh, that's sort of a thing that's happening in a lot of these sentiment announcements. The British pound that was doing well did pull back. And look at that, where the recovery was, which is very textbook, uh, all the places that were hurting the most. CAD, Aussie, Kiwi. I mean, Aussie has been nicely in a two-day rally here, but still in a very in, in a bearish trend. Kiwi, on the other hand, looks much better. And then we have the Canadian dollar, which did rally off of the support. So remember, we looked at the chart yesterday. Are you ready to, uh, you know, take a look at a big sell-off in the CAD? Well, that did not happen because we did not break the support. So this is why it's very important to get those confirmations and not really, um, you know, see something and try to call for a breakout without confirmation because that's where you have a 50-50 chance for either a breakout or a bounce. Now, looking at the equity markets, again, nothing has changed. The uh, score still at a minus two. That's the reason why, because we are still below these moving averages. So we are in a bear rally uh, pattern here. And I actually would like to see a further rally. And then again, similar to what we saw in the markets today, especially in the crypto world, where we, we rallied up very nicely, but it did not hold the gains. And I think that would be, again, that's another shorting opportunity. Now, looking at the schedule, do we have any other catalysts? We still have a lot to go through. We're still on a Tuesday. We have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and the schedule looks busy. We have another uh, numbers coming out tomorrow, which is uh, sensitive to the U.S. dollar, which is the uh, PPI and the uh, uh, manufacturing index Empire State. So again, PPI is another number that is also important along with CPI. Uh, we did not see any surprise out of the CPI. I'm, I'm assuming that PPI will be a dud as well. But again, any surprises, that's where you get a big move. We also have retail sales as well. So I do expect to trade the U.S. dollar tomorrow off of this news event. As we go later tomorrow, we have the GDP out of, out of New Zealand and we have the Aussie employment report. So look at that Aussie employment report. They're looking for a better than expected uh, or better than, better than a uh, last report. I mean, that was a terrible report. This time around, they're looking for a better uh, numbers. Uh, and again, I think this uh, GDP number out of the New Zealand will be important as well because this is, again, a quarterly number. So this is what we have on the horizon in the next 24 hours that we need to pay attention to. So let's do a quick currency analysis, take a look at velocity scores, and then jump into the charts here. So as far as the velocity goes, uh, score goes, we have the yen as a minus two. And I think that's where we, I'll be looking at some of the pairings. Outside of that, look at that. Swiss franc, which was one of the best currency, is uh, you know, turning a little momentum to the downside. So we'll be taking a look at yeah, Swiss franc uh, crosses as well. The British pound and euro, they're kind of in the middle here. Uh, again, they have done generally better. But if we are in this rally mode in the equity markets, I would expect the Aussie and the CAD, even the Kiwi to actually do a little bit better. Especially the Kiwi here. Again, so far, momentum is much better. As far as the cryptocurrency goes, again, we were sitting at a plus three. And because of that pullback today, we are down to a plus two. I wouldn't be surprised to downgrade the score as the week progresses because I think the most, some of the momentum will likely to fade away. So let's take a look at possible trades ahead and talk about where we can find the next where we can find the next opportunity. So taking a look at the yields, let's start with the yields here. You can see what's the reason why we're seeing some sort of bounces here is we came at down very aggressively. The yields were jumping out to 5% and almost went down to 4%. You can see because of the aftermath of these uh, regional bank collapse, we, are, we saw this things come down very aggressively. But I, I do think that this is still uh, premature. Um, you know, <laughs> the bets kind of turn into 
uh, cutting rates or not even raising rates. I still think that next week there will be raised rates, uh, but I think they'll be raising by 25 basis point, maybe not by 50, but it is still at least be uh, delivering a 25 basis point rate hike. So, so far you can see that the market is sort of stabilizing a little bit. And that's one of the reasons why gold, look at that, got a massive rally in gold, and that's also pulling back. I mean, you can also take a look at this move and say, well, is the gold seems like it's in this high base formation. Well, it is, um, but I think uh, this move in gold was very much connected with that quick move down, well, quick, quick move down in those yields. So those are interconnected there. Now let's take a look at the dollar. So you can see the dollar, which has done, were looking much better just four days ago. It's slowly pulling lower. So now it's between the 20 and the 50 to moving average. I personally am not a big fan here for the dollar on either side because I think it's just sitting in that indecision stage. Uh, we could have seen a nice movement today, but that was not the case because we did not see any surprises here. So I still like to this to t retest this uh, prior breakup point and maybe look for some longs there. But again, I think you, uh, if you're trying to figure out where's the next big move, remember next week we have the FOMC rate statement. So this is just a sort of a, a pause for now, but we can see some uh, bets coming in as we go into next week. But I think I like the yen much better here. We got a nice little rally here. You can see we did sort of have a, an exhaustion. And every time you see these exhaustion candles, you can see have a follow up with a nice candle to the downside. So I do like uh, yen to a further downside. And if that's the case, I mean, look at Swiss franc. Same thing. It did. On a daily chart, had that exhaustion. And after that, you can see that it's not really going anywhere. So I, I personally would like to see if there's any sort of shorter term play, especially on a four hour chart. You can see that it's giving up the momentum. If it gives up this level, I, I would actually like this to a further retest of this prior breakout point. Um, British pound, I look at that. I mean, I talked about this yesterday. It's a double top. I don't want to be long until it really breaks out higher, but shorter term, the price action seems to be uh, weakening a little bit. So I think the real momentum or the or the opportunity could be in these uh, growth currencies here. Canadian dollar, you can see uh, on a daily chart, let's go over here. You can see that it's just right at the support bouncing once again. So I don't think this is ready for uh, a short, uh, but at the same time, if tomorrow, if this is just a pullback, and kind of rally again, I don't mind taking a look at the CAD long just based on that sideways trend. And we are now just bouncing off the support. The Aussie, which has looked terrible, you can see that Aussie has been doing much terrible for the last uh, last few days. Um, right now, it's just not telling us it's ready to rally yet. Again, there, this is a very strong level of support, which is now the resistance. You can see that on the chart here. This is a little messy looking chart. You can see that how it happened before. We did go lower, uh, had some sort of choppiness here, and then it just started rally. Is could this happen again? Again, if this would regain this level, I don't mind taking a look at Aussie more to the upside. Now, looking at the Kiwi, I mean, this is more stable currency. So this is why, again, I'm not really a big fan of Aussie because the Kiwi looks a little bit better to me. Um, is this a, a strong buy? I mean, if you take a look at this, this is still in a sideways or in a downward trend here, but for the shorter term, having a nice bounce. So personally, I don't want to be looking for a long Kiwi until it breaks out of this downtrend because then we can have a, a good shot at Kiwi running. But right now, this could be a bear rally. Again, if you look at the trend here, this could be a bear rally, but I just want to make a note that this is not giving us a signal that it's ready to turn yet. But at the same time, I'm not really willing to buy at this point either. So maybe risk reward looks a little bit better if the Aussie reclaims that level, or maybe we'll take a look at elsewhere. So as we uh, take a look at the charts, you can see it's just not giving us great signals for a buy or a sell. So let's go where we can find decent chart setups. You know, I talked about this yesterday, dollar yen, and so far you can see dollar yen uh, turned out to be a decent pair. I mean, we have seen a nice little recovery um, at this point. It's just hanging off the thread here. So I think this is likely to go back and forth in a sideways range. Um, but let's take a look at other other areas. Look at dollars as franc. 
you can see that this thing also going sideways here as well. Let's take a look at some of the pairs that I might be looking at in the next 24 hours. CAD says Frank. I mean, I just want to go out to a daily chart. You can see that there's been some aggressive moves, aggressive breakdowns that's taken place. So is there an opportunity for this to have some sort of a bounce? I mean, right now, as you can see, this was a very critical level that it broke. So in the shorter term, it is finding it is finding a bit of a rally here. If this continues on, maybe we can see a retest of this area that was broken. Um, we can also do the exact same thing and take a look at Aussie Swiss franc. You can see that, again, big move down <clears throat> on the four-hour chart. What we are seeing is that it did break lower and it's just trying to recover in the shorter term. So I don't mind looking at these trades where, you know, maybe it's a low probability, but I like the reward risk ratio. Uh, set up a stop right below it and then look for a, a rally off of that. Same thing goes with uh, Kiwi Swiss franc. I mean, you can see that on a four hour chart, uh, I like the fact that it's, it's actually, you know, bouncing off this downward momentum. Look at the straight moving average is recovering here. So I like this further. If this has a little bit chance for rally, then we just need to use a stop right below here. But as far as the uh, risk to reward ratio goes, it's a little, uh, much better trade. Um, same thing can go with uh, some of the uh, yen crosses, Aussie yen. Look at that. Nice little rally here. We have um, Kiwi Yen. You can see on a four hour chart, it looks a little bit better. I like this further to the upside. And if you take a look at CAD Yen, um, you know, similar setups, you can see. So these are the ones that I'll be paying attention to. But if you are not sure about the markets or you think the market is going to roll over, there'll be next big opportunity, then that's a good time to be uh, just staying in cash. So there's opportunities all over the place. You just have to be in the right place at the right time and be clear with your strategy and your holding period. So the equity markets, again, is in a whole a bear rally, but momentum is improving the shorter term, which means that we can see a, a bit of a bounce coming in. I like, if I have to really look at risk to reward ratio, I like the yen and the Swiss franc short in the shorter term. Uh, again, a, a trade that would last, you know, before the next 24 uh, hours. And then after that, I can reevaluate. Again, tomorrow we have more data coming out, which I'll be trading uh, around those news events. But outside of that, make sure you're trading less and always uh, focusing on currency in play and make sure you have a proper position sizing. There's still noteworthy events to go through. PPI tomorrow. Uh, Aussie Employment Report, Kiwi GDP, and on Thursday, ECB Press Conference. So keep the powder dry. You know, you want to be active around uh, the areas where you think there will be a bigger move happen in a very short period of time. Um, you don't want to be sitting in something that's not developing or you're just trying to trade a dull market. Don't try to do that. Always wait for the right opportunity and there will be great trades coming ahead. Thanks everyone for joining. See you guys in the next update. Cheers.